Hello Legends. In this video, we're going to be building out a chatbot using the new OpenAI 01 model. So at a high level, we're going to be using VoiceFlow for the actual chatbot experience. So I don't have an OpenAI tier 5 API account, which means I can't access this via OpenAI. So instead, I'm going to be using an API service called OpenRouter to access the 01 API. Now, I made a video about this already, which I'm going to link somewhere here. And you can watch that if you want a beginner run through of how to set this up. So in this video, I'm going to be assuming that you already have this set up for yourself and that you already know what voice flow is and how to use it. So I've got two extra notes here underneath the open router API step, which is number one, I've got to figure out how to add conversation memory into the API call. And then also how to add a system prompt into the API call. So looking at the open router documentation. So this is the API call that we'll be making. And as you can see, it's actually a completions endpoint, which means that this is just a single API call. It's very basic. So all we're doing is we're basically just defining a user message and sending it to this endpoint and then getting a response back. And that's it. Like that process is done. So to give you more context, if you look at the OpenAI assistance API and scroll down a little bit. So the way that this works is you make an API call to create a thread. And now this thread contains the conversation history. So every time you add a new message, you're actually adding it into the thread. And then the assistance response is also appended into the thread. So basically threads store messages. And this is how you get the conversation history. So going back to this API call, again, this is just a completions endpoint. There is no API to create a thread. There's no API to add a message into the thread. There's nothing like that. So we actually have to figure out somehow how to add conversation history into this API call. So when I was looking at this API call, I realized, okay, this is an array. And inside the array is an object which contains the user role and then the content for that user role. So then that got me thinking because I recently started using the Pinecone Assistance API. And if I scroll down, this is the Pinecone Assistance API call. So just like before, you can see we're sending an array. And inside the array, we actually have an object just like before, which is a role user and then content and then the actual message that we're sending to the API call. Now, if I keep scrolling down, we eventually get to this API call, which explains how to provide conversation history in a chat request. Now, as you can see, we have the same array as before, denoted by these square brackets, but then inside the array, we have a bunch of objects. So the first one is the first question we send across to the endpoint. Then the second is the response from the assistant and denoted by role assistant. So that's the response to this initial query. And then finally, we have our new message that we're appending into this array, which now, if you look at this, we have context. So the AI now will see, okay, first we had this message, then we had this response, then we had this message, and now it's gonna have conversation history. So back in Open Router, we have the exact same setup. We have messages, then we have the array, and we have an object which contains the message and then the role. So we could technically do the exact same thing here. So that solves my first problem of how do I add conversation history into the API call. Now for the second problem of how do I add a system prompt, I've also got a solution for this. So now if we go back to the OpenAI Assistance API, you can see that we can add some system instructions which overlay across the entire conversation we have with the assistant. Now, unfortunately, we don't get that same luxury in this open router API call. But what we can do is at the start of the user message, we can just pre-append a prompt. Now, this is technically how you will customize the actual responses or the actual role of the assistant that you wanna be speaking with. So that's gonna make a little bit more sense when we're making the actual API call. But there's one final thing that I wanna show you guys. So just like before, I mentioned that I was working with the Pinecone API. Uh, I actually did that within VoiceFlow and I made a video which I can, I'll link here so you can check it out to see how I built the Pinecone API into the VoiceFlow chatbot. But I already made this custom function. And you can see here that it already works with a conversation history variable, which is an array that is then added into the API call to Pinecone. I'm gonna be using pretty much this and slightly modify it for the open router API call. So I'll link this in the video description, but just so you know, this is what we're gonna be using to start off in VoiceFlow. Okay, so now that we've spoken about and figured out these two challenges of conversation history, and then how to add a system prompt, let's go across to VoiceFlow and start building this out. Okay, so I'm just gonna click, okay, so I'm just gonna create a new agent. So let's call this openai-01, leave it as chat and English, click get started, click skip. Okay, so let's go to workflows. Let's go to home and just delete all this because we don't need any of this. To start building this out, I'm just gonna have a basic flow 
where I send a message to the user saying something like, hi there, and I'll get another message block and say, ask me a question. And then eventually I'm going to want to have a function, which I'm gonna copy from my GitHub. And then after the function, the output is gonna be the message, which is the response from the assistant. This is where the response is gonna go. So my flow is gonna be pretty much like this. So now let's actually build out this function for the open router API call. Let's press back, go to functions, create a new function. Let's call this open router and create. Now back in my GitHub, I'm just gonna copy from the second line all the way down to the second last line. Let's copy this. Now let's remove all this stuff and paste it in. Okay, so now we have to fill out the input variables, the output variables, and then our pathways. So over here we have user message, which is the end user message, assistant name and Pinecone API key. So we don't need assistant name or Pinecone API key. And then we have conversation history, which we actually do need because this is gonna be the array of messages. Now, a quick note here, I'm importing the conversation history variable as a variable specifically because within this environment, when the conversation history is first imported uh, over here and then added to the API call, in the API response, we actually take the conversation history and then we push in the response from the assistant. So if you import it as a constant, you're gonna get an error because constants cannot change. That's why we import as a variable because variables can change. Okay, so I'm gonna backspace assistant name because we don't need it. And then Pinecone API key, we don't need as well, but we do need a user message. So let's copy this and paste it into the input variables. Now conversation history, we have to paste into the input variables and I'll tell you why in a second. So all the way down here, when we have a successful API call to our open router API endpoint, we're gonna be sending the assistant message, which is the response that we're gonna be displaying to the user and the conversation history as output variables. Now we have to send the conversation history as an output variable into the voice flow canvas so that it can retain its value. Because if we leave the conversation history totally within this custom function, it gets fully erased next time we use this custom function to send our next API call. So anything on the voice flow canvas itself will retain its memory while the chat session is active. But within this custom function, it will essentially be forgotten. So that's why we have to send the conversation history out of the API call. And then when we make the next API call, we have to feed it back in. So I'm just gonna set these output variables as well. So we have conversation history and then assistant message. And then our pathways are success for successful API call and error for a failed API call. So let's copy them and make our output pathways. So success and then error. Okay, so now since we're only feeding in the user message and conversation history, I can get rid of this assistant name and Pinecone API key from this validation check. So I'm just gonna backspace all this and leave user message. And now let's add in conversation history. So it wasn't there before. And this validation check is essentially checking, hey, did we import user message and conversation history as required variables for this custom function? And if we didn't, just gonna send an error basically saying, hey, there's some variables missing from this custom function. Okay, so scrolling down, we can see that we're sending a role user and then content with the message that the end user gave us. And let's just double check. Of course, we have role user and then content and then the message the end user gave us. So this is the exact same structure. Okay, so now we also have to add model into our API body. So I'm just gonna copy this and add it to the top like we had it before. Let's fix the formatting. Now I need to change the model to either 01 preview or 01 mini. And to do that, let's go to models. And we can see here we have 01 mini and then over here we have 01 preview. So I'm just gonna copy the 01 preview and then paste it over here. Okay, we need to change the URL of this API call. So back in open router, let's go to quick start. And this is the URL that we need to copy. So let's copy this and paste it into this URL here. Now back in the API call, we have authorization, then we have a site URL header, a site name header, and then content type. The site URL and site name are both optional, so we're not gonna include these, but we will include the authorization and content type. So for authorization, it's bearer and then the API key. So now we've already got content type. I just need to add the authorization and then have my bearer open router API key. So let's go authorization and then now let's get our API key. So back in open router, let's go to our main menu, click on keys and let's create a key and call this test-2. 
create, copy this, and now let's paste the API key here. So normally I wouldn't put the API key directly into the API call like this. I would feed it as an input variable and then import it as a variable into this function. But for the purpose of this video, just to keep us moving along, I'm just gonna add the API key directly into the API call. Okay, so everything should be ready to actually test out right now. So we still haven't set up the system prompt just yet. I'm gonna actually get AI to help me with that. But for now, we already have the API call for open router, and then we've added the conversation history into the API call. So let's test this out, go into workflows, go home. And now here, let's select that function that we just created called open router. And now we have to map some of our input and output variables. So the first thing we're gonna map is the conversation history. So we actually have to create this variable into the voice flow canvas. So I'm gonna call this conversation history just to keep it consistent and make it easy for me to know what's going on. Next, we're gonna use last utterance as our user message. So I'm gonna go here and go last utterance. And we have to add last utterance here so we can actually capture the response from the user so we can feed it into this API call. So now we have last utterance here and it is being fed into the API call. For assistant message, we have to create this as well. So let's go create variable, go assistant message create variable and conversation history. We're just gonna map the exact same variable that we mapped here. So let's go conversation history and map it in. Okay, awesome. And now our success pathway is going to be a talk step where our message is the assistant message. So this is the response from the API call. Okay, really cool. Now we need another last utterance step. So we're gonna capture the next message from the user and now we want to feed it back into this API call. So I'm just going to rename this to open router API. And now after we capture the message from the user, once again, we're going to feed it back into here. So I'm going to go to actions, go to block and choose open router API. So let's give this a go. Okay, let's click start and say hi there and send this. Awesome. So now we have a response. Can you help me learn about soccer? Wow, what a nice response. This is very full. This is very long as well. That was actually pretty quick. So, okay, I can help you learn about soccer. So now I want to test if it has this memory, if the memory works. Can you remind me, did I ask to learn about soccer or rugby? Question mark. Let's send this. Awesome. Certainly you asked to learn about soccer. In your previous message, you said, can you help me learn about soccer? So there is a memory in this chat bot. That's awesome. Okay, so that's unreal because this was actually an assumption that I made that the conversation memory method that we used here would actually work and it did and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so next we wanna add a system prompt into the API call. So now let's go back into a voice flow. Let's click back, back again. Let's go into functions, open router. Now let's copy this entire function. Now I've got cursor here. I'm just gonna use this for my AI code editing. Okay, so this is the message I'm sending in. I'm basically saying that, hey, I've got a conversation history variable that new messages and responses are pushed into. I want to pre-append a prompt variable onto new messages only, but I don't want the prompt to be added into the conversation history. Then I gave the actual custom function that we had from VoiceFlow. And at the very bottom, I also mentioned that VoiceFlow uses JSON and not JSON with the open and close brackets to parse API responses. That's just something that VoiceFlow does in their environment. And then I ask, hey, can you retain the voice flow method? So let's send this and see what we get back. Okay, so we've got our response here. We can see over here we have the prompt is added in as an input variable. That's not that bad at all. And then over here, we actually append the prompt to the user message. And then over here, we're sending in the user message with the prompt, I'm pretty sure. But we can check this after we send a couple of API calls we'll be able to review the conversation history variable and see exactly what's going on. Okay, so I wanna make one edit to this. So I don't want the prompt to be mapped in. Instead, I wanna have the prompt already within the custom function and then include a sample prompt. Let's hit enter. Okay, so this looks a little bit better. Now we have our prompt here so we can fully edit it. Scrolling down, we maintain the same functionality as before and the same functionality for the API call. Okay, so let's give this a go. Let's copy this and back in voice flow, let's just Let's control A everything and paste it in. We have to remove the top line and the bottom line because the voice flow custom function just has those as part of the template. So you can't remove the top and bottom lines. So now with that out of the way, let's scroll to the top and let's change this to be you are 
a soccer coach expert and you help users get better at soccer. So let's really lean into this soccer example. Let's go back into our canvas and now let's hit run. Hi there. Let's send this. Oh man, that is awesome. So how can I help you improve your soccer skills today? That is actually unreal. So we have the pre prompt and you saw it was totally separate from the API call that we were sending like the actual prompt itself, but it was appended into the API call correctly. Over here on a side panel, uh, just in case you don't see this, it's just this little tab here, just click it. And this gives you all the live variables in this current instance. So we're having a chat right now. So we can scroll through here and just see what all the variables are currently set to in this environment. So if we started a new chat, they would be reset into different variables. So conversation history is the array of message objects from both the user and the assistant. So I'm just copying this. Let's go to our Google Doc, zoom out a little bit and paste the conversation history here. Awesome. So now look at this. The user role was high there. So that was the exact message that we sent. And you can see there is no pre prompt because the pre prompt should have been appended here. So prompt in this spot. So right before the message, as you can see here, we have the prompt and we append it right before the user message. And then we send the pre prompted user message into the thread. So once again, it should have been here. And since it's not showing up here, that's perfect. And the reason we don't want it to show up here is because if you have a super long prompt, there's no need for you to have, you know, 10 user messages in your message array with the prompt each time because it's just taken up tokens that you don't need to be spending on every time you message the assistant. So that's why we're not actually including it. So this is a smart way to save tokens. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this use case of using the new O1 model inside a chatbot. Now, if this was a little bit too complicated for you, or you want to build out a more sophisticated chatbot with the new O1 model, feel free to hire me to do that for you. I've left my contact details in the description of this video. All right, thank you guys. See you later.